Now, a different example of a habitat where microorganisms are very important is in Chile and in other places on Earth. But this example here is taken from the Andina copper mine in uh, the Andes in Chile, where microorganisms are exploited for their abilities to help with bioleaching. And so what happens is that in these mines, there are piles that are built up and they're fertilized essentially with indigenous microbial populations that are able to live in shockingly low pH levels, down to pH as low as one and sometimes even lower. And these organisms are essentially eating the minerals in this uh, mine pile and in the process of metabolizing it, changing the mineralogy in such a way that copper is solubilized and leached. So here's another example of an environment that is quite extraordinary and yet microorganisms have been able to adapt and even to thrive in this extreme condition. So on our tour of extreme pHs, we just saw an example of low pH, let's now go to a high pH environment. This one I'm showing you is Mono Lake that is in Northern California. And Mono Lake is quite an extraordinary place. It looks almost like it's from another planet. You see these beautiful uh, tufa towers that are calcium carbonate minerals forming. And it's because the pH is so high and the alkalinity is so high that they naturally precipitate from these waters. In addition to having these carbonate minerals contained within this lake environment is a ton of arsenic. And I'll get to this in part two of my lecture today. And what I want to point out right now is that in this very high pH environment, and also one that's replete with arsenic, nevertheless we find organisms called alkalophiles that thrive here, that are able to make a living utilizing arsenic as a terminal electron acceptor in respiration. This is the subject of my second lecture. And in so doing, account for 14% of the carbon turnover in the system. Now let's go on to another example of an extreme environment. Here now we're looking at an extreme of salt. And there's no better example of this than the Dead Sea in Israel. But you can find organisms such as those that inhabit the Dead Sea also in the Great Salt Lake and other places on Earth such as uh, salt flats uh, where you have very high um, salt content. And the organisms living here are capable of growing despite this high salt and have adapted particular molecular strategies to cope with it. One very elegant example of this is their ability to use special photopigments called rhodopsins, and these are colored purple. Uh, and these rhodopsins they have in their membranes and enable them to generate energy under conditions where they need to use slightly different strategies than organisms that are growing under uh, conditions that we would consider more normal. 